Hello, everyone, and welcome to our online seminar on computer delivered IELTS. I hope you can all hear me well. My name is Leila, and I'm a global IELTS master trainer at the British Council. Today, I'm going to give you an overview of the IELTS test, followed by an introduction to the computer delivered test. There'll be some time at the end for you to ask questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, let's start with some background on the IELTS test. Um, IELTS is the International English Language Testing System and is co-owned by British Council IDP and Cambridge Assessment English. Um, it's designed to assess the English language ability of people who want to study or work um, in a country where English is the language of communication. It's a, a very successful uh, test and there are uh, reasons for it and I'm going to introduce or present four main reasons. Global recognition. Um, there are over 10,000 recognizing institutions globally um, that uh, accept and recognize IELTS. It's interesting to note that there are more than 3,000 institutions in the US that uh, also officially recognize the IELTS test. The test format is unlike other tests. We have always tested all four competencies and we believe that it is only, it's the only way to have a complete picture of a candidate's level. The test uses international English and there is no bias towards British or American English. We employ item writers from various different English speaking countries. So students will hear a variety of accents and read a variety of texts re reflecting real life tasks. A distinctive feature of IELTS popular with both students and institutions is the face-to-face -face speaking test. It's the only way to truly assess communicative and in interactive competence allowing candidates to ask for clarification, repetition, and so on, as they would do in the real world. The test is valid, reliable, and secure. Cambridge Assessment English is a leader in the field of test production. There are six stages of paper production with unique test versions. British Council is a leader in secure administration. We ensure that the tests are fair and objective with stringent pre, during and post test security measures. Another reason for success is um, the test accessibility and added value. There are frequent test dates at our centers across the world. Test takers can get their results in 13 days if they do the paper based version and between five to seven days if they do the computer de delivered version. And they can also ask for the TRF to be sent to organization. I'll talk about that a little later. We also have a wide ver uh, variety of resources available for test takers, such as Road to IELTS, our online preparation course, um, our IELTS app, and there are face-to-face -face courses in many countries around the world. Um, you can take a look at our website, takeielts.britishcouncil.org for more information on those. And I'll give out the, um, the web address again later at the end of the presentation. There are two versions of the IELTS test, the academic and the general training. Well, which one is best? It really depends on what uh, you want to use it for. The academic version is usually used for entry to university, college, professional registration and recruitment. It assesses the ability of the test taker to study or train at undergraduate or postgraduate levels. 
the general training version is used for immigration, vocational, secondary education, language training, work experience, and it assesses the survival skills of the test taker um, in a broad social and educational context, things that they'd come across in everyday life. But it's a good idea to always check with your, the receiving organization which test you need to take before you register. The test format, I'll just go over very quickly. Um, there are four sections to the test, the listening, reading, writing and speaking, and the test takes about two hours and 44 minutes. Um, the listening test is 30 minutes with four sections and 40 items. It is the same for both the, the academic and general training. Test takers listen to four recorded texts monologues and conversations by a range of native speakers and write their answers to a series of questions. The reading is 60 minutes, there are three sections and 40 items. Now these are different um, for the academic and the general training. In the academic version, there are three long texts which range from descriptive and factual to discursive and analytical. The texts are authentic and are taken from books, journals, magazines and newspapers and are on academic topics of general interest. There's no specialist knowledge needed here. In the general training version, test takers are required to read extracts from newspapers, advertisements, instruction manuals and books. These are materials that they could encounter on a daily basis in an English speaking country. The writing is 60 minutes and there are two tasks and again there is a little difference between the academic and the general training. In both versions task two is the same but for task one in the academic test takers are presented with a graph, table, chart or diagram and are asked to describe and explain the data, describe the stages of a process, how something works, or describe an object or event. In the general training version, task one, test takers are presented with a situation and are asked to write a letter requesting information or explaining the situation. The letter might be personal, semi-formal or formal in style. In task two for both versions, that's academic and the general, test takers are asked to write an essay in response to a point of view, argument or problem. The IELTS uh, band scale is what we're going to look at now. It's scored out of nine, so there is no pass or fail. Each band corresponds to a level of competence in English all parts of the test, that's the four skills, and the overall band score are reported in whole or half bands, for example, 5.5 or 7.0. Um, again, it's a good idea to check with the receiving organization the score that you need to achieve. Um, here you can see a sample of a TRF or test report form. Um, test takers can ask um, up to ask ask for us to send up to five electronic report forms to uh, receiving organisations free of charge. If they want to send more than five copies, then there will be a courier charge. Again, it's a good idea to check with your local test center. If you need more than five copies, what the charge for that will be. As you can see on the TRF, the test results are broken down into the four skills and there is an overall band score. A uh, point to note here that it doesn't say on the test report form whether the test taker took a paper-based or a computer delivered version of the test. 
So let's look at the modes of delivery. There are two modes of delivery. One is the paper base, which is the main mode at the moment. All the answers are all handwritten onto IELTS answer sheets. For the computer delivered, um, the listening, reading and writing answers are all typed directly onto the computer. Uh, the speaking test remains the same for both. It's face to face, one to one with a certified IELTS examiner. And so far, um, we offer the CD IELTS in over 50 countries. Now we're going to look in a little bit more detail um, at the computer delivered IELTS. I'm going to talk about um, why, it, why take the computer delivered IELTS, how and where you can take the computer delivered IELTS, some key messages, some FAQs or frequently asked questions, similar, similarities and differences between the computer delivered and the paper-based test, and also talk about some useful websites. Well, why the computer delivered IELTS? There are more test locations available to do this, to do the test. There are more dates available as the test is run more frequently than the paper delivered, the paper based. Uh, test takers can get their results more quickly, five to seven days, as opposed to 13 days with the paper based. And test takers can register closer to the test date before taking the test. Let's take a look at uh, the format. It's exactly the same. There's the listening, the reading, the writing and the speaking and the same with the academic and the general training um, versions, exactly the same content as the paper based test test. Some key points, there's no difference in the content of the test and there's no difference in the value of the results, as I said. On the TRF, um, it doesn't say whether the test taker has taken the test, a paper based or a computer delivered test. A 6.5, for example, is the same, regardless of whether the test was taken, um, was done on paper or whether it was computer delivered. Test takers will be able to choose between modes of delivery um, that they want to do, they prefer to do, where both are available. Okay, before I go to the questions, there'll be a quick poll for you. You should see it on your screens any moment. So the first question, do test takers have to have computer skills? And the second question, can test takers with special requirements take the computer delivered IELTS? Just give everybody a minute to vote. Okay, let's see the results. Eighty percent say yes, twenty percent say no to the computer skills, eighty one percent say yes to the special requirements, and nineteen percent said no. Okay, thanks for that. So the test, test takers don't necessarily need to have computer skills to take the computer developed test. 
Um, however, they do need to feel confident using a, um, a keyboard. They need to be able to type fairly quickly. And it's really useful if they are able to use the shortcut fun functions of cut, copy, and paste, especially in the writing part of the test and also for the reading part of the test too, so they can copy and paste answers into um, the answer box. Um, can it be done at home or um, using the test taker's own computer? Well, the answer to that is no. They have to go to an official test center as IELTS remains a very high stakes and secure test. Um, test takers do need to take the IELTS test on um, computers provided by the test center. What about the language of the keyboard? The default keyboard will be QWERTY in format. So if in your country uh, another format is used, it is a good idea to get students to practice on the QWERTY keyboard if they do want to take the computer de delivered IELTS. And the speaking test, is it done on a computer? I think you know the answer. No, it's not changing. It remains one to one face to face with a trained IELTS examiner. The other question in the poll was about candidates with special requirements. While the paper test caters to all test takers, the IELTS partners are researching enhancements to the computer test to cater for more, to cater more fully for spe uh, special requirements. Again, please do check with your local test center if you or your uh, students have any special requirements for taking the test. Okay, we're going to go into more detail of, um, of the different skills on the computer delivered IELTS. There's another quick poll question coming your way now. How long are test takers given to check their answers at the end of the listing test? I'll give you a minute to make your choice. Okay, let's have a look at the results. If we have them. Oh, very split. That's pretty even. Interesting. Split three ways. Okay, let's have a look at the answer. Well, for the paper based, um, the listening test is 30 minutes and there's 10 minutes transfer time at the end where they transfer the answers from the question booklet onto the answer sheet. Test takers can make notes on test paper and they can also make um, uh, notes on, yes, on the question paper, the test paper. Test takers can also write in capital letters um, to avoid any punctuation errors. And some centers use headphones, but other centers use speakers. The computer delivered is 30 minutes as well, and test takers' answers are typed directly onto the test paper. Um, they have time at the end of every section to check their answers, as with the paper-based, but at the end they have two minutes um, to make further changes and to check their answers. They're given a uh, paper and a pencil to make notes if they wish. And uh, they can also write answers in capital letters as with the paper base. And of course, they have headphones um, 
to use while they are doing the test. Here you can see a screenshot of um, the listening test. Some other key differences here to point out. Um, there's no example given at the beginning of the listening test, unlike the paper-based versions. They cannot underline or highlight keywords in the question. They can't leave a blank space. So um, they must put something into the space, a question mark or mark it um, for review. I don't know if you can see clearly at the bottom left, there is a review button. They can mark the question for review and come back to it at um, a later stage if they want to. And at the top right hand corner of the screen, they have a volume button to adjust uh, the volume if they wish. Moving on to the reading test key points. With the paper base, the clock is visible in the room um, and um, Test day supervisors will announce how much time is left, 40 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes and five. With the computer delivered, the clock is on the computer screen. I'll show you another screenshot in just a moment. It'll flash at red, flash red, sorry, at 10 minutes and five minutes. With the paper base, there is a test booklet and separate answer sheet. There's no transfer time in the reading test, so they have to write their answers directly into the answer sheet. With the computer de delivered, the text appears on the left of the screen and the questions and boxes for answers on the right. And there are scroll bars for both of those to move through the text and the questions. Some other key points with the paper based, if they want to change their answers, they have to use an eraser. With the computer delivered to change their answers, it's a little different. With the multiple choice, um, if they have say um, selected answer um, A, option A, and they want to change it to option B, they just click on option B and it will change. With the drag and drop, they just drag the new answer into the box. With the written answers, they just delete, an ans delete the answer and write in the new one. In the paper base, test text can be marked up, underlined, circled and so on, as the test taker wishes. With the um, computer delivered, it can be marked, but it's done in a different way. There's a highlighter button that allows, um, <clears throat> excuse me, test takers to mark important parts of the test. There is also a note function that allows you to both highlight the text and put some notes in a text box. You can leave the text box open on the screen or close it and reopen it later. Um, here you can see some examples of that. With the left uh, screenshot, the test taker has highlighted the areas of the text that they want to focus on. The questions are, are on the right hand side and in the other screenshot, as you can see, they're all, they've also made some notes in the text box. As with the listening, um, at the bottom left hand side of the screen, uh, there is a review button. So you can um, click review and come back to a question later if you're unsure about the answer or want to check it. Moving on to the writing test, um, some key points. In the paper base, there is a text booklet and two answer sheets. 
in the computer delivered, the questions are on screen and answers are typed directly onto the screen. With the paper-based, um, test takers need to practice and estimate how many lines they need to reach the word count. With the computer delivered, this is done automatically. The word count appears on the screen as they're typing. With the paper-based, if they make any um, mistakes or want to make any corrections or editing, they put a line through things that need changing or, or they want uh, ignored. With the computer delivered, they just delete it and rewrite it. In both versions, um, test takers can decide which task they do first, if they want to do task two first or task one first. Um, in the computer delivered, the work is automatically saved. Um, and also, as I said earlier, the shortcut functions um, are very useful here for editing the copy, paste and undo. Here again, we have two screenshots of the two tasks. The left hand side is task one. As you can see, it's a table and the, the text box where the answer must be typed in is on the right hand side. At the bottom of that box, I'm not sure you can see, but the word count can be seen there. On the right hand side is writing task two, the question is on the left and the answer is typed into the box on the right hand side. Again, the word count can be seen at the bottom of, of the box. Okay, that's a very quick run through of um, IELTS, the IELTS test with a focus on the computer delivered. IELTS test. I'll open up the floor now. We have about um, half an hour for questions. I'll do my best to answer the questions that you have. If there's anything that you would like to ask, please do type it into the chat box. So for more information, as we're waiting to see if there are any questions, um, you can take a look at our website, takeielts.britishcouncil.org. Um, there are some really good videos that show you, um, give you a clear insight into what the computer delivered test looks like. You can also register and do a practice test, a computer delivered practice test. And you can also uh, watch some videos giving more information and suggestions and hopefully familiarize you with the computer delivered test a little bit more. Okay, some questions coming through. Um, a unique test version is the question. Oh, lots of questions now, I've lost it. Uh, you mentioned a unique test version. Could you clarify what this means? Um, okay, so this means that uh, every test is different. There may be test items that are possibly reused, but never in the same co combination. I hope that answers your question grade. Uh, the next question, is there any platform where applicants can practice this new mode? Yes, uh, our website, takehighelts.britishcouncil.org. If you go there, you can register to do a practice computer delivered IELTS test and you'll be emailed results as well. I hope that answers that question. How does one become a licensed IELTS test specialist in Ukraine? Olena, I'm um, not sure what you mean. Do you mean as a teacher or as a test center? Um, as a test center, you would need to contact your local British Council office to see what the conditions are to become a test center. As an IELTS specialist teacher, 
there are um, workshops that are run face to face and online for teachers of IELTS. Do contact your local test centre for more information on that. I hope that answers your question, Alina. Jamilia, hi. Um, can I do writing test on computer but others on paper? No, um, it's an either or, Jamilia. You either do it all on the computer or you do it all on paper. Um, the next question is the quality of listening better while taking a computer based exam. That's a good question. Um, it's not about the quality. I think it's about the headphones. Um, most test centers do use headphones, um, regardless of whether it's it's paper based or not with the computer delivered. It's all with headphones. You can adjust the volume as you as you wish. The paper-based versions, most test, test centers use headphones, but some don't, and they have speakers. It's worth checking with your local test center. Um, Maria asks, can we type the answers all in capital letters in all sections? Um, yes, is the short answer to that, you can. Um, Ian has the same issue with capital letters. Yes, I mean, it's, um, we always recommend to write in the listening, um, especially to write everything in capital letters so that um, the test takers don't have to worry about punctuation and capitalization, and that's perfectly acceptable for both versions. Um, next question from Ivana. In the paper-based test, do you use a pencil in all parts? Yes, Ivana, you use a pencil in all parts. Uh, next question from Galaxy A7. I think that's a telephone. Um, if a student has intermediate or upper intermediate level, is it possible for him to pass IELTS for high band eight or nine? That's an interesting question. Um, it, uh, in, I think you would have to be higher than intermediate level. Test taking um, preparation, test skills, test familiarity will help to a certain extent, extent, but ultimately it is a language test. So you do need to have um, C1, C2 level of English in order to be able to get a high band score of eight or nine. I hope that answers your question. Arta has already said no. Um, Olena, as a test center, yes, please do contact your lo local British council and talk to the exams team about the um, conditions required to become a test centre. Unfortunately, um, I don't have that information. Ina asks, is it possible to practice IELTS on computer before passing it? Yes, Ina, you can again go to our website, take IELTS.BritishCouncil.org and do the practice test there. Lena um, says, don't be sorry, Lena. Uh, do students have an opportunity to start with task two first? Yes, they do. In the paper base and the computer delivered, they, they can decide which task they want to start with. So you are quite right. Ian asks, uh, many people take IELTS as a group. We need material to use in a classroom. Is this available? Um, IELTS.org practice tests are okay for a bit of home practice, but don't cut it in the classroom. Um, there are lots of good um, course books out there, Ian, um, that you could use. I'm sure you're familiar with them already. Um, Choose one that suits the level of your students and more importantly, the amount of time you have with them to prepare them for
for the test. Um, sometimes teachers don't have the luxury of having them for a whole year or, or six months. It's, it's sometimes just a very short course that they have to do. Um, but there's there's not a book that that we would necessarily recommend but there are lots of good uh, course books out there that you could use there are also some um ideas for teachers on our website and also on our teach english website the british council teaching english website as well take a look there Marina asks, can we pass this exam only for checking our knowledge? Is there a trial version? Um, again, the trial version is on our website, the computer delivered one that you can do and, and get some results, get some feedback if, if that interests you. Ina asks, can we write capital letters in the reading? Yes, you can. No reason why not. Uh, grade asks in CD IELTS does each candidate do the test at their own pace or does each section start uh, simul simultaneously um, everybody starts at the same time and the timing for every for for um, each section is the same so they have 30 minutes for the listening with two minutes at the end 60 minutes for the reading 60 minutes for the writing um, Marie asks, students are usually getting high scores in all the skills except writing. Yes, that's a common thing, Maria. Um, I would suggest perhaps looking at the public band descriptors for the IELTS um, writing and see um, what perhaps your students need to work on in order to improve their IELTS scores. There are lots of samples um, available from various publishers and also um, online IELTS.org, um, our website as well. You can take a look at samples of students' writings and the scores. But the public band descriptors are, are really useful. Um, another question, if the spelling is I think it's is the spelling automatically checked no there's no spell check I'm afraid um, <laughs> in the computer delivered test so that software doesn't exist so students do need to pay attention to their own spelling thank you Bill Chai for sharing that uh, link that's the link that you could uh, if you click on you can go to the test I was talking about the familiarization test for the computer delivered IELTS thank you for sharing that link for the materials as well Armin asks is it obligatory for an IELTS teacher to have the very certificate that's an interesting question um, I wouldn't necessarily say have the certificate, but you need obviously to be familiar with the tests. I, I'm a great advocate for um, doing the, the practices, the tests that I expect my students to also do. So if you're going to do a practice test with your students, I really, really highly recommend that you do the test yourself first and see what the challenges um, will be with that particular practice test that your students might face i think it's it's very um it's very revealing when you do with if you as a teacher have um challenges doing that particular reading test or that particular listening test then you can be sure that your students might struggle with it too okay Bill Chai has also shared another very useful link. Thank you. I'm very behind the messages. I'm trying to catch up. What books can we recommend? Um, British Council doesn't recommend any particular practice book. Um, 
but um, I would go to reputable publishers um, and use their books. There are a lot of uh, practice tests that you can access that are past papers. So those are always a good place to start as well. Thanks, Bill J. Road to IELTS, yep, is another source for practice tests for IELTS. Um, part of Road to IELTS is free for people to use if they register on our website. Uh, and if they register to take the test with us, the, the real test, if you like, with us, they will get access to more uh, content on Road to IELTS. Uh, Lena asks, TOEFL and PTE have some software to run a number of mock tests. Um, do you think you could tell us when or if there's a plan to introduce some ECD IELTS software? That's a very good point. Um, I'm sure there will be more um, mock tests and practice tests coming very shortly. Um, do uh, keep an eye on our website. There will be updates about all the resources um, available. You can also download our IELTS um, uh, app, which is really useful. Lots of useful practices on our app as well. Um, another question, how often can you take the test if you're not satisfied with the result? Um, as often as you like is the short answer, but again, for recommendations, I would say to, if, if the test taker doesn't, if the candidate doesn't get the result that they want, they really should go back and do some more practice, get some more remedial help before taking the test um, a second time. Um, taking the test in quick succession, I. I don't see how they would improve their scores massively. Uh, for speaking practice, uh, Nareen asks, um, there, again, there are good um, videos available um, on our, um, I think, YouTube channel, if I'm not mistaken. You can see some sample interviews. Um, the usual practices that we do in class for speaking, um, is always useful, um, but take a look at the test, look at the band descriptors as well, the public band descriptors, to see uh, what skills um, test takers need to demonstrate to achieve a better score. Thank you, Bill Che, for sharing the app link. Um, Ian says, the problem with CD test is material, unlike the paper-based ba test where there's a lot of stuff. That's um, a fair point. There, there is more, there'll be more coming, um, more is being developed as we speak. Um, as it's fairly new, um, it, we're still catching up, but there's still quite a lot out there. Um, available 